Environmental Studies, Unit 6, Global Environmental Issues and Policy. This is part 2 and in this chapter we will be discussing international agreements and program. In the previous video we have already discussed about climate change, global warming, ozone depletion and acid rain. So in this part of video we will be discussing about international agreements and program including Earth Summit, UNFCCC, Montreal Protocol, Kyoto Protocol, Convention on Biodiversity, Ramsar Convention, Chemical Weapon Convention, UNEP, CITES, National Action Plan on Climate Change and its Mission. There have been a number of important environmental conferences all across the world. And the very important conference and the first ever held conference on environment matter is the Stockholm Conference of 1972. So in a Stockholm conference, international leaders discussed about persisting environment problems for the first time. And from our country, Indira Gandhi, who was our Prime Minister at that point of time, attended Stockholm conference. Later, in 1983, Brundtland Land Commission was formed in order to check what is the appropriate method or model of development that can be followed across the world. It was later in 1987 that Brandon Land Report was submitted and in this report, sustainable development concept was highlighted for the first time. So sustainable development, that means the development that meets the demand of, that meets the need of present generation without compromising with the ability of future generation to meet its own need was actually formulated in Brandon Land Report way back in 1987. So it was clear that the model of development on economic growth cannot be followed for long and we have to think in terms of sustainability. But how? So in Rio conference, that means in 1992, actual guideline on sustainable development was formulated. So Rio conference was the conference when all the countries across the world, they discussed what is the appropriate ways by which we can have sustainable development mode of development mode of pattern so in the same year 1992 two documents were signed and two bodies were formed UNFCCC that is United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change this was the body which was primarily uh, created in order to control climate change and till today UNFCCC is quite active in order to reduce climate change all across the world in fact because of the initiative of UNFCCC, we were able to formulate Kyoto Protocol and Paris Agreement. Same year of Rio conference, there was also formation of CBD, that is Convention on Biological Diversity. So this Convention on Bio Biological Diversity was form formed in order to conserve plants and animals. So in Rio conference, it was clear that economic growth along with environmental protection, that means sustainable type of growth will be followed all across the world. So Stockholm conference in 1972 was hosted by United Nations Conference on Human Environment. It was attended by 113 delegates out of which even Indira Gandhi of our country was the participant. In this conference, environmental awareness was raised and it was clear that environment was on the world's agenda. Later on, it was a Stockholm conference that led to the formation of United Nations Environment Programme. In 1983, Brandon Land Commission was formed and the name of the commission was on the name of Norwegian Prime Minister who was also the chairperson of this commission. This commission is also known as World Commission on Environment and Development. So the main aim of this Brundtland Commission was to find out appropriate way or the model by which all the countries can do economic growth without doing any harm to the environment. So Brandon Land published its report in 1987 and this report is well known as Our Common Future. So in this report that is Our Common Future, sustainable development concept was highlighted. And it was clear 
that economic growth should be done in such a manner that doesn't affect the future generation so we need to use all the natural resources wisely so that they are available for the next next generation also rio conference 1992 so rio conference was held in 1992 after 20 years of stockholm conference 178 countries participated in rio conference along with many non government organization media person and many other participants so in rio conference which is also known as united nations conference on environment and development it was decided that sustainable development guideline should be prepared and it was in rio conference that the guidelines and document on how world will move into the sustainable model was decided so in the rio conference one important step was unfccc so it was quite evident that climate change was taking place and climate change has resulted because of rapid industrialization all across the world so industrial revolution was responsible for increase in global climate change so to control it unfccc united nations framework convention on climate change was formed in 1992 So this body is responsible to make guidelines on the ways by which we can control climate change. So two important developments done by UNFCCC are formulation of Kyoto Protocol and Paris Agreement. So UNFCCC entered into force in 1994 and it has been ratified by 197 countries so far. Kyoto Protocol is also one of the important treaty and it is also the first treaty which was signed to control global climate change so this climate change was formulated as we know by unfccc united nations framework convention on climate change so this kyoto protocol was all about redu reducing climate change and this was this could be possible only if we can control our carbon dioxide So since it was clear that industrial revolution in the developed country had released lot of carbon dioxide and was and was responsible for climate change therefore more burden was put on these developed countries therefore Kyoto protocol followed the rule of common but differentiated responsibility which means that all the countries will be participating and doing and taking up actions to reduce climate change but primarily there will be more burden on developed countries since historically these developed countries are the ones who have contributed to more carbon dioxide emissions so kyoto protocol was adopted in 1997 and it was in force in 2005 there have been many amendments like in 2001 2008 and finally this commitment ended in 2012 Convention on Biological Diversity Convention on Biological Diversity is an international treaty which is focused on conservation of plants and animals by creating in situ and ex situ methods like national park wildlife sanctuaries or by making ex situ conservation methods like zoo botanical garden etc This convention also focus on sustainable use of biodiversity that means if at all we are doing any kind of economic growth plants and animals should be used in such a manner that they are available even in future their population should not go rapidly low another point which was mentioned was related to fair equitable sharing of benefits arising from the use of genetic resources which means that in case this genetic resources was discovered by any indigenous community then at least that community should get some amount of benefit So this convention on biological diversity was all related to a sustainable future and this CBD was signatured on uh, Earth Summit that means in the same year 1992 and entered into force in 1993 So at present there are 193 parties and convention of biodiversity is taking care of conserving all plants and animal at all level whether at ecosystem level species level or genetic level now many a times we also need to create biotechnology crops 
so gm crops or genetically modified crops are also created but in case we are going ahead with biotechnology plant or if we are mixing genes of two or more species then in that case cartagena protocol on biosafety will be followed so to conserve biodiversity this convention that is convention on biological diversity is playing a very very crucial role to control ozone depletion montreal protocol was signed this protocol was signed in 1997 so by 1997 1987 it was quite evident that ozone depleting substances are creating hole in the ozone layer of stratosphere and if this continues then we would have been affected with skin cancer cataract and many other skin problems not only this agricultural productivity and marine ecosystem would have, would also have been disrupted so it was necessary to control climate to control ozone layer depletion and this was possible only if we could phase out ozone depleting substances like chlorofluorocarbon so montreal protocol was all about reduction of chlorofluorocarbons so this protocol or this treaty is very innovative and successful and by following montreal protocol principles all across the world we are also able to reduce ozone hole so by implementing montreal protocol we have avoided more than 280 million skin cancer 1.6 million skin cancer deaths and 45 million cases of cataract in united states alone so the number worldwide would be much more in 2016 Another amendment was done in Montreal Protocol which is known as Kigali Agreement. In Kigali Agreement it was decided that since hydrofluorocarbons they are uh, the replaced uh, replacement of chlorofluorocarbon since the implementation of Montreal Protocol but now these hydrofluorocarbon have a problem. These hydrofluorocarbon they are not causing ozone depletion but they are a part of greenhouse gas so con if we continue to use hydrofluorocarbon then it will create global warming and issues of climate change so in kigali agreement further it was decided that in coming years even hydrofluorocarbon would be phased out so some new alternative which is better than hydrofluorocarbon would be used in case of fridge refrigerators and in other equipments ramsar convention was signed In the year 1971 in one of the Iranian city with the name Ramsar it it came into force in 1975 Ramsar convention is also known as convention on wetlands so we know wetlands are those areas which are highly productive and diverse ecosystem so these are the areas which provide our supply for fresh water So the definition of wetland is quite broad as per convention. So according to the convention wetland could be anything where there is water source. For the source for example lake, river, underground aquifer, swamp, marshes, grassland, peatland etc. So in this Ramsar convention it was decided that all wetlands will be used wisely and those wetlands which are extremely important for the survival of different species or some important species they would be designated as designated as ramsar site and they will be mentioned in the list of wetlands of inter international importance next convention is convention on chemical weapons so convention on chemical weapon is all about reducing the harmful weapons which could have uh, which could proliferate on earth and may create considerable damage on environment So according to the convention that is chemical weapon convention it is required that destruction of these chemical weapon take place within a specified time period So this convention was entered into force in 1997 and it is implemented by organization of organization for prohibition of chemical weapons So organization for prohibition of chemical weapon sign a uh, sign uh, you know parties and these state parties could be any country these state parties have to declare openly what amount of weapon they possess and after declaring they are open for challenge inspection 
that means at any time any moment they can be inspected whether the number of weapons that they have de declared is correct or not so this entire convention is all about motivating different countries to reduce their chemical weapons convention on international trade of endangered species of flora and fauna which is also known as cites cites is an international agreement between governments in order to control wildlife trade so wildlife trade is estimated to be of worth billions of dollars it include hundreds of millions of plants and animal so people are deriving large number of products like food products exotic leather wood wooden musical instrument timber etc and they are exploiting plants and animals so this trade which crosses border between the country need to be stopped and cites is the convention which was signed in this regard so approximately 35000 species of animal and plants have got protection under cites so cites came into force in 1975 and in cites it is clearly mentioned that the parties have to implement uh, implement provision of cites in their national law even in india provisions of cites have been incorporated in wildlife protection act of 1972 at present there are 183 parties of cites united nations environment program united nations environment program was formed immediately after stockholm conference and this is the main body which set global environmental agenda it promote implementation of environmental dimension of sustainable development so right now unep is working working on number of issues and they are assessing global regional national environmental conditions so there are six areas in which unep concentrate the first area is climate change so unep takes steps in order to help countries in adapting mitigating it also provide technology and finance so all across so that all across the world climate change could be controlled second area of unep is post conflict and disaster management in this unep assess the situation of crisis affected countries where war or any other tense situation had occurred it also go and check and assess environmental issues in disaster affected areas moreover they also prepared plan for example unep had prepared plan which is known as post conflict and disaster management branch and it include post conflict assessment in different countries like afghanistan lebanon nigeria and sudan third area in which unep is working is related to ecosystem management so at a broad level that means at ecosystem level ecosystem means any area where plant and animal lay, uh, they are staying together and they are interlinked to each other so ecosystem management is also one of the area in which unep is working and they have done number of work for example global program of action for pro for protection of marine environment from land based activity was implemented by unep The next area of UNEP is environmental governance. So UNEP formulate rules, regulation, policies and they also guide con other countries to implement such policies which are more favorable for sustainable development. UNEP is also working towards reduction of harmful substances. In fact, they have launched number of programs like approach to international chemical management, global agreement on toxic mercury. So these steps are being taken up in order to reduce harmful substances the last area or the sixth area in which unep is actively working is resource efficiency so unep is doing commendable work in order to create awareness and in order to provide technology to other countries so that they can use energy efficiently so there have been number of global strategies which have been formulated towards sustainable consumption and production
India's National Action Plan on Climate Change. So India has implemented a plan to control climate change and to control carbon dioxide in 2008. So this action plan was released on 30 June 2008 and it, it, was, it was basically formulated to address the future policies and program for climate mitigation and adaptation. This National Action Plan on Climate Change has eight missions and all are related to reduction of climate change. The first mission is National Solar Mission. We all know climate change can be controlled only when we phase out non-renewable resources and therefore National Solar Mission promote our valuable solar energy. So the idea is to increase the amount of solar thermal technology all across the country. To increase the production of photovoltaics to 1000 megawatt per year and also to have 1000 megawatt of solar thermal power generation. For this, we need to do international collaborations, we need to develop our research centers and also funding and international support is required to implement solar energy. Second mission is related to enhanced energy efficiency. And in order to promote this, it was decided that energy consumption should be decreased in large energy consuming industry. So industries were provided with energy saving certificates in order to motivate them for energy reduction or energy consumption in, sub in sustainable way. Second is energy incentive was provided by reducing taxes. So if the appliance is energy efficient, it will be having less tax and that is the main power to, to give uh, incentive uh, to the customers so that they purchase energy efficient appliances. Third, more private public partnership was also created as a part of this mission that is national mission for enhanced energy efficiency. Third mission is national mission on sustainable habitat. So in order to have sustainable habitat, we need energy conservation codes in building. We need to reduce urban waste. We need strong enforcement of automobile fuel economy standards. We need fuel which is more efficient and we need to incentivize people for using public transport. Fourth mission is national water mission. National water mission is all about making country self-sufficient in water supply. It is quite evident that, that with climate change there will be more chances for water scarcity. So in order to pre-plan the situation of water scarcity and what steps should be taken in that situation, this national water mission was created. National mission for sustaining the Himalayan ecosystem is the fifth mission under national action plan. It's quite evident that Himalayas will be facing lot of consequences due to climate change. So it is really required to conserve biodiversity, its forest cover and ecological value in Himalayan region. So this mission is all focused on all these dimensions. Sixth mission is National Mission for Greed India in which, we, in which the country is planning to develop more forested region. So with afforestation of 6 million hectares of degraded forest land, we will be able to control climate change and we will be able to reduce carbon dioxide. Seventh mission is National Mission for Sustainable Agriculture. And we all know that climate change will affect agriculture because of irregular weather pattern. So we need to be well prepared and therefore Sustainable Agriculture Mission is all about development of climate resilient crops. Expansion of weather insurance is mechanism. So in case farmers lose their crop due to any harsh uh, climatic condition, then there should be some insurance mechanism and best agricultural practices. The eighth mission is National Mission on Strategic Knowledge on Climate Change. And in this mission, we want to develop our knowledge base on climate change by creating more research fund, more laboratories, international collaboration and also collaboration with private sectors. So this is all about National Action Plan on Climate Change. 
so here we have completed international agreement and in the next video we will be discussing about different environmental legislations in our country thank you all of you